Hi, I'm Fox. This is way too hot to drink. As I said, I'm Fox. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We are going to be doing a planet tour. Show off all my babies here. So to start off with, I've got a lot of pothos and aeroids. I really like aeroids, honestly, because in my opinion, they're really easy to grow. Uh, they don't die super easy, so that makes me happy. I have here a um, neon pothos. I have these like bright neon green, almost yellow colored leaves, and they're just... I saw them online a whole bunch. I was just like, oh, it's a green plant. I don't understand why people are so excited, but then I saw it in person and I understood. It's just this bright color that really... I don't know, it just makes me really happy. It picks me up. And brightens my day. And then I also have several of these variegated pothos. Oh, this one needs some water. It's kind of sad. But I've got this guy and this guy. I love the variegated pothos. I honestly don't know which type this is. I know there's like a marble queen or pearls and jade and enjoy. I don't know. I don't know what they are. I know that this one is a variegated and it's really pretty. I really enjoy variegated plants. Um, just one thing. I'm gonna give this water as soon as we're done here. Um, this is my golden. Uh, my partner has one of these and it's enormous. It's just exploding and branching out like all across their living room. And he got that from a cutting from his friends who their parent plant is also spreading all across their living room. So I got this and it has just exploded. Clearly the genetics of this plant are just really, you know, strong or it really just likes it in Washington. But um, yeah, it, it was growing bigger and bigger leaves and putting out more small puffs in the pot for most of the like early spring that I had it. And then since summer, it's just exploded. All of these leaves have grown up and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful plant, um, gorgeous bits of variegation. There is one leaf here that's got some burning on it, but it's okay. It's a beautiful plant. I also have another one of those variegated pothos in this little container here. Let's see, next one is my Serapisia woodyi, or my string of hearts. Um, let's take a look. I've got Lion from Steven Universe in here because it's just cute. This plant was one really long strand all coming off of one tiny little vine. I ended up taking all of them and just wrapping them in a circle in this pot with a little bit of sphagnum moss on top. And so now there's like a whole bunch of little starts coming up. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a whole bunch of little baby vines that are coming off and all of these vines that are shooting out are, are basically new. That's what I wanted, is I wanted a much bushier plant, and that's what it seems to be doing for me, so I'm glad that I did that. So I am a bad plant owner. I have no idea what this is. I think it's called a silver something. I've heard it described as a baby's tears, but I don't know. It has red vines, if that makes any difference. And the tiny leaves are a little bit shiny. But it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a trailing plant. I looked it up and it's really good in terrariums. So when and if I ever get my act together and make a terrarium like I keep planning to do, then I'll probably put this in there. It's just going crazy. I had it on my desk for a little while and I continuously had to keep clipping it back because it was actually like growing into my workspace. So then I was like, okay, you're really cute and I love having you on my desk, but I think I'm gonna put you with the other plants since you clearly want to really grow. And as you can see, it's gotten really long. It's trailing quite a bit. So um, I might make some cuttings and make another couple babies of this, but I honestly would really like it to get very long and lush. I know if I trim it, then it'll just get more full and also continue to get long, but I just, I'm not ready for it yet, so this one actually this is one of my newer plants my boyfriend Tyler got this for me and when he got it for me when I brought it home it was like this tall like this little node and then since I brought it home it's just gone crazy with these guys 
I looked it up online and it's definitely supposed to get big and it's also called a foxtail fern, which that's why I got, I mean, he got it for me, of course. Um, but yeah, it, they're not, they're not small and they, it's not going to remain small. If I, uh, if my research was done correctly, it's going to get pretty big. So I'm happy about it. I would like more big plants. A lot of my plants are small, as you can see, they, most of them fit on this shelf. So once this buddy starts getting bigger, I'll be pretty pleased. I just got to keep the cat away from him because these little springies are definitely cat fodder. He hasn't even noticed it yet, but that's good. That's for the best. Little Oyakarnosa or Hindu rope. I don't know if that's um, a politically correct term, but that's what I know it as is the Hindu rope. So that's what I'm calling it. Can you see? Are you on camera? Okay. You can see kitty ear right there. Right there. So this is my Hoya Carnosa. Um, it started out as just a tiny little cutting. It started out only like here in the pot when I bought it. And I've had it probably two years at this point. It's a really slow grower, but it is so cool looking. Like I just love those spirally leaves. I've seen bigger ones in the shop. I've thought about buying them. They're pretty pricey with good reason. I mean, not pretty pricey, like $60 for a decent sized plant, which I mean, they are slow growing. I get why they're that price, but I just, I'm not really ready to throw down that much money yet on a plant I already have, just bigger. But I do love um, this plant, this Hoya Compacta Carnosa. Oh, it looks like it's putting out a new little leaf too. Look, you can see right there. Oh, maybe it won't focus. This pair of succulents, I think it's a Haworthia, um, in this little thing here. Um, they're doing all right. They're definitely happier in this than they were in the container I had them in before, but I'm not so certain about it 100%. They definitely need a little bit of water, and I feel like they've needed more watering since I put them in here, but it could just be because it's summer or because they're finally in the substrate that they need to be in. If I hadn't moved them out of their nursery pot when I first got it, I might just let them grow like that for a long time. So yeah, this is them um, moving into their better succulent substrate. And then in here, I have some Anisonii cuttings, and then I actually have another plant of it right here. So I had a big Anisonii, pretty big. It was just getting really stringy, running a lot. So I ended up making a bunch of cuttings and trying to save it and basically hoping that the cuttings would survive and then I'd also be able to save the big plant and then I'd have a bunch of plants. The main plant just continued to be running and needle, needly, viney, what do they call it when there's not enough leaves on the plant? Viney, you get it. And then one day I was like, well, maybe if I just move this vine over here and I can pin it into the dirt, it'll, you know, root into the dirt and it'll start putting out new bud. No, it, it snapped the vine and then it was just like one sad stringy vine with hardly any leaves hanging out of this big like six inch pot and I was done. So I just tossed it. I took all of the cuttings that I could and I tossed it and I'm happier for it because I had been fighting with that plant for a long time long time. You're supposed to enjoy your plants. If you're not enjoying the plant, either find somebody who can take care of it and wants it or get rid of it. It's not worth it. I know there's a lot of new plant owners who are very like sentimental about their plants and I'm not saying just toss plants out willy-nilly, like give it your all, but you're supposed to be enjoying things. So don't torment yourself over a plant. Uh, this cutting's roots are going crazy. I think it's time to Pot them up. What do you think? I know which one you all want to see, but we're gonna wait. This is my very sad basil plant that I've been trying to grow all summer. It's definitely not doing almost anything, but it's cute, so I'll, I'll let it live for now. I just need to get a full-size one and put it in hydroponics. 
here are some more of those that and and sony i wet sticks um i'm just trying to grow a couple of them just to see what happens and as you can see they're putting up little shoots so i'm definitely gonna have more it's not like i'm gonna be short on and and sony eye it's just they're gonna be small so i also have these two succulents um this is a actual succulent and then i have this little what are they called I, I can't remember what they're actually called. Lithop. Lithops. I've got this little lithop here, too. It's so cute and squishy. I can't squish it too much, but I want to. But they're so cute. Okay, next up we have Tranescantia. I actually just got a couple days ago, again, from my boyfriend. Um, these two big cuttings, they're huge. Um, I think this is Tradescantia um, Nanook or Zebrina. I don't know. It's the standard one. It's the one that you see most of the time. And I just absolutely love the purple coloring. You know, all of these, like, super easy to grow, easy to root, quoted as being generally indestructible plants are kind of my jam. I never really had a green thumb up until the last couple of years, so... This buddy and the pothos, really, they are just up my alley. And I've got another one of these that's much lighter, pinky, soft pink and lavender color. I'll insert some clips here. These Tradescantia spiderwort, whatever you want to call them, they're absolutely gorgeous. Their coloration is beautiful. I love the varying degrees of purple, which is one of my favorite colors. So yeah, these are really high up there. I know that people consider them a really common plant, but they are one of my favorites to look at, and they've been some of my favorites to grow so far. So yeah, highly recommend. Okay, so I had always heard people talk about string of turtles and referring to this string of hearts. They call these a, a string of turtles, but this is a string of turtles. You could see they look like turtles, like their little thick succulent leaves are like turtle shells. When I saw this plant, I immediately knew that I had been wrong all this time, <laughs> which sounds really silly, but I just knew. I was like, oh, that's a string of turtles. And that's something that I absolutely need. It's a really cute plant. It puts out these little doohickeys here. And also, as previously mentioned, these beautiful thick plate-like leaves. So I just got this one recently from a shop called Nightshade, which is around the corner from my place. And I'm going to probably show a couple more from that shop. I will try to point out which ones specifically are from that shop. But I'm so pleased. I'm pleased with this one. I'm pleased with every purchase I've made from there. I just think these guys are so cute and unique. So yeah, if you get the chance to pick up one of these. Uh, uh, I love the Serapegia woodyi too. Honestly, if you're looking for something that's unique and kind of weird, this guy is definitely an interesting succulent type plant to check out. Okay, I love love carnivorous plants, but they are notoriously hard to take care of. These are two pitcher plants from different stores. This one, I actually don't remember the name of the store I got it from, but I've had it for about a year and a half, two years. Clearly it's pretty small and I will probably have to size it up in potting again, but it's putting out a crazy amount of pitchers right now. It's super happy. And then this one I also got from Nightshade, the plant shop that I just mentioned. It only has one pitcher, but it should be putting out some more soon. And I have been really excited to explore more with these particular plants. I find them really useful because honestly, I have really Really bad fruit fly problems. In Washington in general, I feel like that's just kind of a thing that you tend to deal with, and I'm not the best when it comes to the kitchen sometimes, so I definitely uh, appreciate having the these guys in there to help me take care of some of the fruit fly issues. They are absolutely beautiful little plants. They can be kind of high maintenance. You do have to water them pretty much every other day and keep them nice and damp, but if you take care of them, then they're really helpful. So what more can you ask for in a plant, right? 
All right, now we're going to move on to the biggest plant I own. This is my Monstera Albo, and he is named Sad Boy. So the story behind his name is when I went to the plant store to buy him, I was just going in, just looking around. I had no idea anything about these plants other than that they got big. What I didn't know is that there's two types of Monstera. There is this kind, which honestly, they, he will get really big by comparison to some of my other plants, but he's not the large form of Deliciosa giganteum. I have some friends who have the large form and I didn't know that he, if he was the large or the small form and after seeing that plant, he's definitely the small form. I have no questions about that now. But when I went to pick him up from the plant store, I was just wandering around and I saw this beautiful plant and I decided I needed to take it home. And as I was walking home, it began dripping all over me. The leaves were just dripping like raindrops all over me and I was like is this plant crying? So that's why I named him Sad Boy and basically what happens is when these plants are like exhaling essentially um, they will breathe out water it's called gutation um, and that water will drip off of their leaves like tears and so that's what was happening with Sad Boy. So he is one of my favorites. Um, I consider him like a baby to me. Um, you know, I said earlier that, you know, if a plant's not making you happy, then just toss it or, you know, don't struggle with it. I would do just about anything to try to keep Sad Boy going. I don't think I could ever sell Sad Boy. I don't think I, yeah, Sad Boy is like a, a pet. He's a little bit higher up on the level of plant love. And I love all of my plants. I love you babies. Please don't think that I don't. I don't mean to have favorites, but he's just, look at him. Like, look at how majestic he is. He's just exploding out of the pot, bursting out here. I got him in this Lechuza pot. It's not set up to be self-watering. I personally water him. Once I put the pot moss bowl in here too, he doubled in size and growth rate, honestly. They say that you should get a moss bowl for your Monstera, that it's good for them. And I thought that it was just kind of like an optional thing. Honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to get a Monstera again and not just immediately plant them in with a moss pole because I just see how happy it makes them. Which, of course, leads us into... Oh, okay, so this is, I call her Fancy Plant because this is a variegated Monstera. For those of you in the plant community, you know that these are going for a decent amount of money right now. They are the pop popular plant since the beginning of 2020 and definitely were a little bit before that as well but I know that as soon as the lockdown started everybody was clamoring to get some of these. Um, I ended up getting two cuttings at the very very beginning of 2020 and that is these two cuttings. Um, I got one in February and then I got another one in June? April? May? Sometime in spring. I let them both grow for about a year in um, jars and just get really good roots. And then I planted them both into this pot with a moss pole, made them into one plant because ultimately what we want is one big, beautiful, bushy plant, right? Since then, she's exploded as, as just the same as with Sad Boy. The second I put a moss pole, on and gave them the option to climb. They both attached uh, or started attaching and put out a whole bunch of new leaves. Since the start of the summer, I have seen at least three new leaves off of each cutting in this plant uh, pot. I did have to cut off one of the leaves because it was all white and I was going to just leave it to see, but it ended up putting out a, um, well, actually, let me see if I can find it. It ended up putting out this, it ended up putting out this leaf, this like half green leaf. So I knew that it wasn't going, it wasn't reverting. It was just one white leaf and it would be fine if I, if I hacked that ghost leaf off. A majority of these have a decent balance of white and green and that's exactly what I'm looking for in this plant. If you actually look right now, you might be able to see there's another leaf forming right there, right there. 
so excited. And you can see this is the stem I cut the ghost leaf off of. And thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions about any of my specific plants, please leave those questions in the comments. I would love to make videos on each of them individually if you're interested, but especially this one and Sad Boy on like care or my personal experiences. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. If not, then it's alright. This has been Fox on the Fox Club channel and thank you for watching. See you next time.